We'll proceed first with Petty Officer Cornelius Hickey, who has been convicted today of the wanton murders of Lieutenant John Irving and Petty Officer Thomas Farr. Ample evidence has been stated before command so as to suggest Mr. Hickey's guilt well proven. With that proof comes confirmation of the next more pernicious charges of sedition and mutinous designs. These charges are all punishable by death. And at Captain Crozier's discretion, the sentence will be carried out by hanging before the men now assembled. Mr. Hickey and Sergeant Tozer will be given last words. But first, your captain would like to speak. When we abandon ship, I promised you men two things. The first was that help was already on its way to us, back from Fort Resolution, with Lieutenant Fairholm and the party I sent out last summer. We now know those men are dead. I found them on watch, and Captain Crozier had me swear an oath of silence. Which you broke. Now be quiet, you'll get a chance to speak. Sergeant Tozier and Mr. Morphin discovered this two days ago as only some of you already know. I decided not to share it. I own that decision and would make it again. Not to deceive you, but to protect your reserves. But now we know, now we all know, no one is coming for us. We must get ourselves out under our own steam. Uh, I don't know what Mr. Hickey's plan was. But I know it didn't include all of you. And those of you who might have gone with him, I can promise you he would have burned through you like fuel. Lied to you and used you down to your last muscle. And here is how I know. Mr. Diggle, will you open these, please, and tell the men what's inside? Fresh, sir. Louder so they can all hear. It's fresh meat. What kind of meat? Seal, sir. Thank you. The other promise I made to all of you was that when we crossed paths with the Netzelik, that they would help us. Lieutenant Irving met them. And do you know what they did to him? Dr. Good, sir, would you please? They fed him. They fed him. They didn't cut him down and deface him. That was Mr. Hickey. They didn't slice off his man parts and punch 23 holes into his lungs with a boat knife. That was Mr. Hickey! They were no war party, those Eskimo. They were more of a family, it seemed. Four men, an old woman, and a girl. A little girl, no more than six years old. Mr. Hickey lied to you. Mr. Hickey lied to all of you because he needed to cut the legs out from under my leadership. And in so doing, he was prepared to set all your lives swinging. Now we will share this meat, Dr. Goodsir. But that line of help has been cut off from us now. We'll find another, no doubt, but not with gammoning dogs like this among us. <laughs> Hear me, men. I take no pleasure in these deaths today. I want to bring every last one of you home. But if I cannot bring these two, then I am only doubly resolute about the rest of you. Now, before we hear Mr. Hickey's last words, I have one more request to make of you. I need volunteers to man the rope. You two, come forward.
Mr. Hickey. Yeah. I've let the captain speak now long enough. Telling every manner of falsehood against me. Proving only every man lies. Even this man, your uh, captain. But I must pace this thing he calls truth with another of his own recent deceptions. June the 11th, last year, the day Sir John was killed, something else transpired. Crozier made a plan. In secret. To get himself out without you. There are many feats that preoccupy a captain's imagination. But abandoning his ship and his men should not be among them. Yet I hereby tender my... Oh, go on, Captain. You finish it. <laughs> Where's that? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Collins. Get his right here. The armory. That's where they'll go. Lay down those arms. Where are the Marines? 
Come with us, left handed. I'll not tell you again. No one can see you now. You're invisible. They'll think you've died and been carried off. Get on the ground. Mickey didn't get to say half of what he wanted to say. Edward. That's your name, isn't it? Edward. Crozier was going to lead that sledge party himself and leave. Quit the Navy. Quit all of us. You didn't know that, did you? He was going to leave you a big losing hand, Edward. Watch out. Mr. Blanky, it's Mr. Reed. Five guns. Here you are. 